Hello everybody and welcome! My name is Ursa Ryan and today we are playing as Marley because the channel supporters have come up with quite a good challenge and I want to get stuck into it today. Now one of the core mechanics of Civ 6 is the accumulation of great people. We've got admirals and engineers and merchants and writers, all sorts of people. They give your empire one-off or maybe even permanent benefits that can really plow you into the future, really take the lead of the game. There's nothing the AI can do about it and some great people builds are better than others. Looking towards you Brazil and your carnival projects. The challenge as presented to me is simple. How many great people can you earn? How much of a monopoly on great people is it possible to go for? A very good question. Often we'll pick a certain type or maybe even two or three types of great people like a scientist or engineer and depending on who we're playing we will beeline them and say you're playing Germany for instance you've got Hansas, 12 of them and you've got workshops and you've got the card that boosts great engineer points, you might monopolize them. That's not enough. We want to get as many great people as possible. We want to absolutely monopolize every single great person in the game that we could possibly get. That is the challenge. Make a build that is so great person heavy that the world doesn't stand a chance. It's deity. It's standard speed. Today we have a lakes map that I have admittedly made hot. I'm playing as Marley. Y you gotta play it as hot. It's just one of those things. Balanced start position, abundant resources. What's that though? There are a couple of mods. You'll have seen them already. If you want to play this exact game, you could try and replicate it using the mods I'm about to tell you and all of these details. Don't bother. Come to Discord. There's over 11,000 people who all love Civ there. Come say hi. Come chat to me about Civ strategies. I'm always lurking there. But or more importantly, more, more important than anything to do with me, the save file and all the mod lists I use in these games, these are all on Discord. Free to grab anytime you want. Hopefully I'll see you there. I heard your ears pricking up though. Yes, mods. I do have a couple. And unlike in some of the previous games we've played in the channel within the last month or two, I don't think these ones are crazy overpowered. These are just quite interesting. The first one, Asumus Magnus for Great People Expansion. Now this mod from Platy is actually really fun because it adds I'd say maybe a third to half extra great people of every type. So for instance we can see one of them popping up here, Augustine of Hippo, a new scientist who gives me one Eureka for random, random medieval era technologies and then gives you religious combat strength from that point onwards. There are a bunch of new and exciting options. I'm trying out a new portrait mod as well for great people. It's called Real Stylish Great People. It just means that we've got better portraits for the mods. I like to play with this sort of stuff. It's user interface. It doesn't make a difference. But you'll also notice great sovereigns. This is a whole new type of great person I've thrown into the game. It comes from the great sovereigns mod. This is a really interesting one. It's a totally new type of great person. They can only be taken from great sovereign points, which come, as you can read, primarily from districts and buildings, but can also come from world wonders, policies, and city projects. Now, the only things that I have found so far that give sovereign points are government plazas and a couple of ones. Wonders. So we're going to need to keep an eye on those. Look, there we go. Government Plaza, great sovereign point, one per turn. And then several buildings give you points after that. Could be quite difficult to monopolize. We're going to have to do our best on that one. As far as I can tell, the diplomatic quarter does not give sovereign points. Finally, a mod introduced to me by The Civ Show. Go check them out. Wonderful channel. Honey's Victory Menagerie. There are multiple additional victory types you can go for in Civ 6 with this mod. And one I've added today is called a Charisma Victory. Now, the mod suggests that you set it to a score of 50. I've gone for 70 because I've introduced more great people into the game. But it's simple. The first person to 70 great people wins a charisma victory. That is deceptively difficult. Just a little note on that. Great profits don't count and commandant generals for Grand Columbia, they don't count either. 70 great people. That's actually more than you think. Like for instance, if I look at generals, even if we took every single general in the game, I think that would only give us about 24, 25. So getting to 70 is going to be tough. We're going to have to monopolize a lot of different types of great person. Now I was chatting to my supporters and I was thinking about going for Brazil because obviously Brazil is really good at great people. You get points refunded and then you've got the carnival projects, but we decided in the end to go for New Mali. Lots of gold, lots of faith and a purchasing ability to use my gold to snab great people cheaper could come in very handy, especially on the sovereigns. Those are a little bit more difficult to get, but I can use my gold on them. I am really looking forward to this. Should we get going? I think we should. And now, for an important update. Having been expelled from Oxford University, Ursa Bear had met a man named Paul. 
Oh dear. Luckily for Ursa Bear, he had amassed 40,000 subscriptions. These beautiful little signatures attracted the attention of none other than Gilgabro, scared off by the majesty. Paul retreated and left Ursa Bear to his way. Searching for new subscriptions, Ursa Bear traveled to the coast, where lo and behold, it looked like more people, more people for subscriptions. Alas, it was not to be. Ursa Bear, our sweet, innocent bear, is now trapped, harassed by giant crabs. Will you save Ursa Bear from crabs? Will you help Ursa towards his goal? Thank you so much. Back to the video. Turn one, and you know that I say this all the time. Play every start. This is the first start that I have loaded. I could have gone for a massive desert start. I could have gone for a all desert map. No, we're going to play the first one that's given to us because it's interesting. I, as Marley, want desert. Every desert or desert hill tile around my capital gives me faith and food. It means I can nab a very quick early pantheon. Faith and food are very important because my production is terrible. However, no real desert. There's some over to the right, but it's not where I start. Smash the reset button, I hear you say. No, 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 never reset because Singy. You can see it there, a little bit of culture, a little bit of science. If that doesn't scream second city, I don't know what does. In terms of starting though, if I were to go on this river, I could work a four food tile immediately. However, I would get no faith and no food whatsoever. It would be a very, very un -Marley start. So maybe I should cross the river. I could settle on this floodplain, but I have have one desert tile near me, I get one faith per turn. It means I won't get the first pantheon, but I might get maybe the second or third. Or I cross the river. That means on turn two, I could settle on the sugar, get the luxury immediately, or I could then move up one further tile to this sugar. Now that would again give me the resource, but it would give me two desert tiles around. Double the bonus. T I'm tempted. I'm tempted by that. I think I will go and find Singy for the era score. But let's cross over. I'm not sure if this is the best idea in the world, but it's what we're doing. Geothermal fissure already. Look at that. Beautiful campus opportunity. Maybe? I don't know. We'll keep that in mind for now and we'll see what the AI throws at us. Lots of people not settling turn one. Interesting. I love the way the AI does that. It really gives it a good combination. Oh yeah, there's a lot of deserts to my right and a new continent as well. We've left Pangaea Ultima to Amasia. Ooh, interesting. Very nice. I think this is the good settlement. I could go up one further tile and get four faith rather than two, but I would lose the luxury from turn one. It's all about getting a little bit of bonus. Plus two faith, plus two food. That's okay. Production in this area. I mean, that's appalling. We have no production in this area whatsoever, but you know what? That's Marley. That's just what Marley does. We're growing in two turns. Oh, an extra two food underneath my city for settling on the sugar. Yeah, I think that was the play. What should we build? I hear you say. Let me tell you now. Don't matter at all. <laughs> It doesn't matter at all. Minus 30% production, two buildings and units. And like, don't get me wrong, it would, even if I had some production, at least I could work something. I don't have any production. It's useless. It's terrible. I do want a religion, but until I get a pantheon, I don't know what religion I'm going to go for. So I think I'm going to start working towards currency and my Sugaba. That is just too good a district. So I'll start maybe on pottery. I could go for horseback riding. Unfortunately, horses will only spawn on grassland and plains and I actually have very little of that around me. It's all floodplain or hills or marsh or rainforest or whatever. There's a lot of different stuff here. I, I know what I want pantheon wise. Look at all these marshes. Look at all this desert floodplain. Oh, I know I can hear you saying it already. Ursa, you've got to go desert pantheon. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I'll put a little bit of production into monument, but honestly, it doesn't matter. It could not matter less. Let's find Singy. There we go. Are we the first person to find it? Yeah, we are. Excellent. It's good. That's really good. That already is looking like a decent settlement spot. It's on a river. It's within two tiles of Singy. We could get the era score from that. And we're already on two population on turn four. Oh yes, it's glorious. We have no production in this city whatsoever, but it doesn't matter. Just need that pantheon as quick as possible, please. Now, one thing I am going to start keeping an eye on, and this isn't the overwhelming urge requirement for this game, but I am going to start keeping an eye on a couple of achievements I'm going to start to tick off. And there's two I have in my head. Sid Meier's Ditch Digging Simulator. Use two cities and make the Panama Canal to make seven contiguous land tiles passable by ships. 
an engineer's dream as well. Have a canal, dam, aqueduct, railroad, Golden Gate Bridge, and mountain tunnel in a city. Now, the only thing I can never remember on Golden Gate Bridge is whether or not it needs to be on an ocean tunnel. Can I build it on a lake? Do we have the option there? Do we have flexibility? Cannot be built on a lake, must be built on coast. So right now, these lakes, not so good for us. But that is a coast. And in theory, I could build Golden Gate Bridge there, right? Yeah, it does work. So we'll keep this in mind. This may be difficult, but it may also be possible. I think I can build a dam and I could build a canal in this city. It is technically possible. There's going to be a lot of stuff that might ruin this, such as nitre, coal, oil, but it is technically possible. It means I'll have to go for an aqueduct in this city as well, because it's got to have everything in it. A mountain tunnel. There's no need to put these on, but I, this is almost for my own memory to jog me later. And I'm going to put a railroad symbol on. Is there a railroad symbol? Yeah, uh, no, build a road. Oh, come on, there better be railroad. You know, I don't think there is. How appalling. Oh, no railroad symbol. I'll put the road in just to remind me. But it's technically possible. An engineer's dream is technically possible in this city. Let's keep that in mind. It could be something rather fun. There's also some coast up there. So there are other options available to us. I tell you what, tribal villages are going to be very important to us this game. Very important. I didn't mention at the time, Hattusa's there and they have been met by someone. That's a bit annoying. Strategics would be a good thing to learn there. If I could get some horses, iron, nitre, that sort of stuff from Hattusa, I could then sell it for beautiful gold. How are we going to monopolize great people though? My idea as Marley is to obviously use gold to buy them, but when it says 30% penalty towards constructing buildings and training units, what it doesn't give me a penalty towards is districts, wonders, or projects. So I could, in theory, utilize some tactics that we saw on our previous challenge game. We played Marley recently and using monumentality in faith, we could spam settlers out really quickly. There are combinations with Marley that are brilliant. The Sugaba, 20% discount on gold and faith purchases. Faith being specific. Monumentality then gives a 30% discount, which means that we'd be buying settlers at 50% reduced cost. I could then take Theocracy and take another 15%, so we'd be buying settlers at 35% cost. If we do this, ideally what happens is that we can just spam cities around the map really, really quickly, and then we can start focusing cities on each type of person. Have one city with an encampment, one with a harbour, one with an industrial zone, one with a Sugaba, one with a campus, one with a theatre square, and then get them all doing their respective projects. And then hopefully that'll get me some points and then we can buy the rest. That's the aim. 70, th this is what we're going for. I'm not going for any other type of victory. I want 70 great people. It's going to be really tricky. I think that sort of diversification is gonna be what gets us the victory here, but we'll see. Oh, get a kill. I think there we go. It's just a little bit of experience towards bronze working. Already up to four population though. Oh, exciting. Still growing, still growing. I'm gonna get to five pop very quickly but it's just the lack of production tell you what it's killing me feel like we're gonna meet somebody soon yeah i'm going straight for suga but i think it's the play i do think it's the play some of these early game merchants are really good increases trade route capacity by one immediately from the start of the game yes please oh more desert to my left as well should be a hot map should be plenty of desert around and I don't think, well normally the AI doesn't beeline desert too badly so there should be lots of spaces for us to settle. Code of Laws gives us gold, urban planning gives us production. Production's useless for us, I'm actually going to go God King. This is one of the few times where even though I'm just about to get a Pantheon, I'm going to still go God King and I want to unlock the government plaza as soon as possible because I want those sovereign points as soon as possible. These great sovereigns, they're really interesting. Now unfortunately I can't see them as they pop up, I don't know, the overview tab is isn't working on sovereigns it just doesn't link like that but we can see already these sovereigns they provide very strange but very powerful empire-wide bonuses for your civilization so ahsoka to start with cities receive one faith and one food for each specialty district that is something that starts small and towards the end of the game gets very big there are some really interesting synergies there we should see them nicely i can hear what you're all saying Shout it louder. Desert folklore. It's what Marley does. Yes, I know. Plus 12 holy sites. They're really good. They're really good, but it's great people. That's what we're going to be on today. That's what we want to focus on. Yes, I know production would help. Faith would help with great people. It's really, really good. How are we going to build the holy site in the first place? The holy site is, how much is this? It starts at 54 production. It starts at 54 production. We've only got four production per turn at the moment. It would be so slow. 
Or, or, and I can hear you now saying, it's so good, Lady of the Reeds and Marshes. Already we have one, two, three, four, five tiles that could be worked in the capital. That's another ten production from working those tiles. And it frees me up. It frees me up to settle in more places. The desert's always going to be useful for me, but I don't necessarily want a holy site in every single one of my cities. I want to diversify. I need to use my mines. I need to use, just to get great people, Sugabas, definitely. But it's all about great people. I could go Divine Spark, but no. I think Lady of the Reeds and Marshes. I know. It feels weird to not go for the Desert Pantheon, but I'm not going to do it. It's not happening. It's not happening. Look at that. Two production under my capital. Two more production there. And now we're going to be working that Marsh Tile with new Venom. Look how much more production. We've just doubled it in my capital. From this turn, we'd have to wait ages to get a religion. Ages and ages and ages and ages. This is the benefit now. This is where I realize, oh, it's going to tease me by saying it's going to work that Marsh Tile. I mean, it's not going to take it. Come on. Snag this Marsh Tile. You said you were going to. You said you were going to. Oh, why would you go for that wood? And then, ugh, because the game thinks that all the tiles are like equally useless. They're not. This tile is much better. It's a 3 2 tile. Come on, sort yourself out. Get better. Writing. We are now on the boost. I do want a religion, I think. Probably go for some sort of happiness or gold giving religion, just that I haven't got to work uh, on, on like a perfect work ethic each time, but we'll see. See how it goes. Lakes maps are full, absolutely full of land. So I'm actually going to whip a couple of scouts out here. Tribal villages will be important for me. Relics, that'll be a really nice thing to do. This scout is literally just following my warrior. Go away. It's literally following me. You're going to run off now. I've hit you, right? Nope, they're just going to stay there. Okay, this is really weird. They're just desperate. Desperate for friends. Absolutely desperate for friends. This desert's actually reasonably small. Oh no, actually it goes through the mountains. Could be bigger than I thought. You know, we've had a distinct lack of so far. Tribal villages. Oh, there we go. At least one. Good. Owe me game. You owe me a good one. I was hoping I'd get the boost for writing soon. I really want to boost through to currency. I'm going to go animal husbandry and just hope. If someone met Hattusa. There is someone in misdirection. I want to go and find them quick. I think I can put it off any longer. We should probably now look to go for another city. I just don't like building actual units with Mali. It's a real problem. Someone's also going for scientists already. It's always the case, isn't it? Yeah, we need to meet somebody. I'm just gambling. I'm gambling on one more scout. It's the triple, the elusive triple scout start. If anyone can pull it off, we can. Early empire boost. Okay, that's not ideally who we wanted. That looks like the Dutch. Okay, someone's near us, but we have met someone now. That's good. That's good. That means we can get our campus down now, which is... Oh, no, can't. Still haven't met them. Preslav. Again, someone's met them. No luck on city-states this game. There are the Dutch. You know what? It is an honor to meet you. I'd love to sample your hospitality. There's writing boosted. I reckon we can send them an immediate trade route. They may even like me for that. And they've got a luxury. Oh, I can sell them my luxury, though, for a bit of a four gold per turn. Is that it? I reckon you know, we're going to wait on that. No, no, no. One thing I'm not going to do is I'm actually not going to put a campus down on any tile that in theory could be used for any of my green districts, aqueducts, dams, canals. This is the more important thing. So I'm going to actually take a two plus two tile rather than a plus three here because this could be aqueducted. This could be aqueducted. This cost me 90 gold. I need my gold. I can't spend it. So we're going to get rid of the sheep. It seems weird. We're going to get it down as soon as we can. I and mean, then currency is going to get boosted ASAP as well. This scout is going left. This scout is going to go right. We're going to circumnavigate the globe as quick as we can. This one is just going to head down. I want to find all the land around me and see what was see what's going on. And my gold is going to be used for the settler. I don't want to use my production on anything that I've got a minus 30% penalty for. It's really pointless. Someone's also going for generals. I tell you, these classical era ones, we're going to be doing our absolute best to get as many as we can, but it's going to be tough. Norway, I'm not going to have a fleet, so it's going to be tough to be friends with Norway. Goodness me, they're on either side of us. Do you want my sugar more, though? They do. This is the sort of deal. I'm after better and now I can buy the gypsum for less so we go we just traded luxuries I gave one I sold one gets us a bit of gold that way perfect stuff military tradition boosted and bronze working and we have avoided a dark age I mean a dark age in the classical era is kind of the meta if you're going for holy sites but it, for me I just I think it's too much faff I'd rather just avoid that and Bologna nice okay another city-state we they want a eureka for masonry and Preslav wants spearmen there, there are options here there are options here Geneva. Oh, so many scientific city-states. Wow, 
That's mad. They want an encampment, actually. I should get that relatively soon. Nalanda, another scientific city-state. Goodness me, this would have been the game to go for campus spam, I think. Alas, not, not today, not for me, but very good to know. Now, I believe with the new mod and all the new great scientists, there are two scientists available in the classical era that give a free library. Hypatia, who gives the plus one on libraries, but also another one, Kailun, who gives two gold for libraries, except there are two options here for our free library. That's really nice. I want the trader for the Netherlands quickly. Let's just see how quick and how effective that trade route would be. It would give them two culture, but it would be a huge friendship boost of the Netherlands, and hopefully that would avoid them forward attacking me. 180 gold. I'd get that gold back in 60 turns. Oh, that's appalling. I want to get the research grants. I would like a Sattler, but... I think it's worth it because I want the currency boost. I really want the currency boost as quick as I can. So let's go for the trade. Yeah, we're going to do it and send it to the Netherlands. Every shipment we send them will cause them to flourish. I can hear it already. Uh, it's annoying I'm giving them two culture per turn. But as soon as they start building some districts, what are they building their campus? Holy sight. Okay, so we'll get another faith from that trade route as soon as that's built. But they'll like that. They'll like that. They'll give me some friendship. I, I, I think that's the play. I do think it's the play. People are already going for the sovereign points. Look. Look at that. This is the problem we're going to have with AI. Getting all of these great people, they are scattered out and they are immediately starting to do that. Oh, I lost my warrior to an annoying scout. That is frustrating. That is very frustrating. Never mind. Get two gold per turn more from my trade route. Discipline. I thought that would help me, but no, I might as well go for survey now. Get double experience on the old scouts. And do I go for Amani or do I go for Pingala and just try and get some actual yields or Magnus to be able to get some settlers out? Oh, food isn't my problem. Pingala and, and Grants. I think mean, that's going to be quite handy, isn't it? But I never, I never regret going on Marnie. She's generally so solid at picking up city-states and exploring around the map. Let's go on Marnie. Who's the most likely city-state to do? I think sending a trade route to Nalanda, maybe? I think they could be further away than I expected, though. Yeah, they're quite far away. To Geneva? But they want an encampment? Yeah, we'll send you over to Geneva for now, but this, this could be either way. Arabia. Hello? Nice to meet you. Yep, let's exchange information on capitals. You're ages away. Cairo is ages away. Uh, if we were playing Mansa Musa today, I'd be able to send a trade route to Mecca and we would have got the achievement. Oh, another time. Another time. How much is your open borders? I really need to come through. Please let me through. What is it? 19 gold? Ha, I'll go round. I'll tell you what, I'm having the worst luck with barbarians this game. Oh, just like finding camps in tiles that I had no visibility over until I stood on them. Uh, having them like die immediately. There's... There's a lot of pain on this map. There really is. I forget that. At least we made three scouts. I, ugh, I'm getting one scientist. I think these scientists are a bit of a losing cause at the moment, aren't they? Uh, should we get the government plaza instead? At least then we can go towards sovereign. So we go for the Sugaba first. Let's go for the Sugaba first. Get that Sugaba there. It'll be a plus two. Then I can pop down the government plaza there. Make that plus four. Make this a plus four as well. That would help. I really need to settle out. This beginning of game is too slow. There's currency. Let's get the Sugaba down as quick as we can. And merchant points are traditionally the one that AI doesn't challenge for. So at least we have an option there to get some great people. Oh, barbs, though, are just there everywhere on this map. So many. Scotland, hello. Wanted to meet you. Chocolate Hills. It's a very, very slim chance that I'm going to get a Golden Age this era, but that is actual tribal village. Yay! Something. Something for me. Scotland just gave me friendship. That's fun. I like that. How is Arabia suddenly getting three sovereign points per turn? What have they done? They've built pyramids. Is that a thing? Do you just get them from like every single wonder you build? Oh, I don't know. 20 horses. Hey, that's actually good. I can sell those horses on the market for a ton of gold. Yes. Good. How many turns have we got? Six turns. I can circumnavigate before that point. That'll put me to 21. The Sugaba should give me the Golden Edge. If I can pull this off, then that'll be an unexpected, amazing miracle for me. There is the Sugaba. Four Era Score. Beautiful. And more importantly, 20% discount on purchasing in the city. It doesn't count towards great people, but it is an important one. First scientist is gone. Second one grants two copies of silk and an irrigation boost. She's useful, especially because I actually do need irrigation, but chances of me getting her quite slim. So what I'm gonna do. I'm just, we're just going, I'm just going all in now. I mean, campus, do we wanna go campus or merchant? Can't let Scotland get all of the scientists. They, they are the most competitive. So we will go for campus research projects. But we're now getting 23 gold per turn in. And that will start to increase. But if we can get monumentality, I tell you what, that'll be really handy. Arabia and Scotland really going at it this game. Brutal. 
Absolutely brutal. I really, really hope I'm the first to circumnavigate. That would be a shame if I was not. I really need the Dutch to remember that she likes the fact that I have a trade route. I'm getting the plus two bonus from just having the trade route, but I'm not getting the bonus from actually the Dutch agenda. This one, billionaire. Just it's only plus two. The billionaire bonus is huge, much bigger than the one we're seeing right now. Open borders we can sell though. Yes. And yes, I'm just going to save my gold briefly. And you know what, Max? I am going Magnus. Feels like a weird choice, but I'm going to start pumping Settlers out, and I think that's the way to do it. I could buy my first Settler. be 255 gold, but I'm actually going to go for Granary first so that my city grows to 7 pop and I can get the next district down. Oh, there's, there's everything. I am just doing my best to avoid doing anything involving Settling. This is going to be such a weird game. Sometimes. Sometimes you've got to do it. Oh, you know what? Arabia might actually take out... Scotland here. There's the Eriscourt. Perfect. We will go to a golden age with three turns left. Oh, this could be the turnaround, everyone. This could be the turnaround. Order at flood. You can try. There's nothing to break there. It's not going to happen. Scientist points. Yes, I've got a huge chunk there. That's lovely. We've got merchant points coming in as well. And there's some iron. I could sell iron. I could sell iron. Let's go for the builder. Yeah, I'm going to have to do it. Just everything. Absolutely everything I could do. Oh, you know what? I could have waited two turns and got a discount on that builder. Never mind. Oh, the Dutch are at my borders and they suddenly like me five. Go on. Go on. Delegation. Yes. Giving you open borders. Don't be doing this to me, Dutch. I, I don't want to have to do a war now. I am not in a place for war. And I, I can tell you are in a place for war. You are up for it. That worries me. That worries me a lot. Golden Age. I mean, it's got to be monumentality. We could get science from our Sugabas, but it's not worth it. 30% discount on Settler and Builder purchasing. That now means with our Sugaba discount, we're getting 50%. And luckily, we do have the friendship. Look at that. I told you the trade route was worth it. I told you it was worth it. They like me now, and they're not going to declare war on me. They were, they were ready to. They were ready to declare war on me there. Oh... The vindication, the feeling, the smell of vindication, it's all, it's all lovely. Now, that means we could now buy a Sattler for 160, but we're going to build the government plaza first, then we'll buy it. I'm just going to do one more of these projects, one more of those campus projects, and then I'll build the government plaza. Irrigation! Let's get the plantation down, and now we have another copy of sugar to sell. Oh, that's a lot of gold. Yep, everything. Everything's being sold right now. It's all about gold for us. I could have waited there to get the boost on irrigation with the new great uh, scientist, but I actually, that, that gold is really, really handy for me, so we're we're going to ignore that for now. I'm thinking about whether or not to skip her, but she grants two copies of silk. I could sell those immediately. I don't think anyone's got silk. No, they don't. They really don't. So just getting that scientist could give me a ton of gold. And as Marley, that has to be my most important thing. So it's very tempting. Only one great person has been claimed so far in this game. And we got number two. Libraries provide gold. Maybe that would have been the play. Maybe it would have been the play. But we're just going to have to gamble on the fact that it wasn't. Treat myself to one more marsh tile as well. Oh yeah, a bit more production, a bit more food in this city. And we need the housing actually, thinking about it. But first, silk. Yes, two copies of it. Oh, it doesn't sell for a huge amount, you know? That's um not ideal. Somebody wants to buy it for a little bit more. I, I will sell it to the Dutch quickly, just for a bit of gold. We'll keep that other copy. That makes me happy. It does make me happy, to be fair. Oh, there we go. There's the housing as well. I feel like my city's now starting to actually grow. I feel a little better about it now. I'm slightly annoyed that we're not going to get the first great sovereign, though. The AI is actually doing pretty good at picking those up. Come on, give me tribal villages. I've had one all game. Just come on. I need more mathematics is boosted. It's rare I get the mathematics boost, to be fair. And quarrying boosting is something that I need. One of the city-states wanted that. But governor, Magnus, provision, done. Okay, let's start kicking these out now with force. I'm going to have to treat myself to at least one unit here, but someone wanted a spearman, right? Preslav did. Oh, I'll get that in a second. There's the first settler. I think I will go and settle near Singi because there's incense, there's honey. Two copies of jade, really strong settlement location, that one. So yeah, we'll absolutely go for that. Scientists are greatly competed with, but I do have a monopoly on merchants. So I think I'm going to run into that. Let's just go commercial hub investments. This gives me more gold. I can use that gold to get more settlers. Right now, that's fine. And yeah, the gold is coming in from all of my luxury sales, which I'm going to do. I can buy some ivory instead. This is where we just start to multiply as fast as we can. First sovereign has gone. Oh, it's the sovereign points per turn. The card. There is a card. Interesting. 
Okay, so the next one, a boost to all medieval era civics. That's huge. That is massive. Medieval era civics are all the difficult ones as well. Oh yeah, we could we could do with you. It's gotta be, there's only one. Classical Republic, 15% bonus great person points. And we'll put the sovereign points in for now. We'll try that. I want gold. Gold, gold, and diplomatic league. For now, that'll do. So now we're getting double envoys. We can start to do this a little bit better. I do want at least one spearman because I need to escort my settlers. So that is something I probably should do at some point. But the fact that it gives me a little bit of city defense, I mean, that's just a positive. That's just a positive. Is there a project? Met oh, there is a project. Grant sovereign points. Oh, we could do that. That is, it's a bit of a gamble because the commercial hub investment projects I think are good but you know what I'm gonna try it I'm gonna try going for those projects they're quite expensive 63 but it gives me gold on top of that so I think it's worth it we'll, we'll give it a go I don't know the, the optimum strategy with these sets of mods that's kind of why I like playing with mods like this sometimes it's just a totally new set of things there we go there's the billionaire trait now the Netherlands likes me she'll be my super friend for the rest of the game Oracle was built as well there was a very slim chance I was gonna take Oracle but alas not to be city number two it's next to Singi that's what we like and we can get a builder to get three luxuries into this city and we can start work on the Sugaba almost immediately which we're going to do. I think the places that we need to settle are going to be the ones that give us tradable resources and two incense and a little opportunity for a canal city there. I mean that's probably where we're going to go in this direction now. Each settler we get increases the cost by about 60 gold maybe a little bit less. Normally that'd be 120 gold so we like this. This is good and we're about to get a big Big dump of merchant points now which is good bam oh we need more than that we need a lot more than that these sort of deals yes these are what we are going to need we need all the gold from ai at all times 15 gold per turn for my incense yes yes i wish i knew more about the sovereigns and how many there were but this this it just sounds really good a boost all medieval era civics i mean that's it's big do i save my gold and just purchase I'm tempted to. I'm tempted to. I haven't have. I've never had a sovereign. I feel like I need at least one before the AI scoops them all up. So now that Amsterdam is on side, we don't need to send a trader to them anymore. Nalanda instead will get another envoy with them. I could do with a library actually. Oh, that's a big flood. That's a big flood. No, 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 no. I just lost a pop. But more importantly, all my improvements got pillaged. Ah. Uh, oh, not even pillaged. Just removed. Fully removed. Oh, I'm gonna need another builder. That's annoying. Preslav, you are now an ally. Yay, two era score. City number three. I'm actually going for all the horses first and then we'll go for the incense. But I mean, they're all good options. They're all good options. This one just gives me an amazing tile to work to start with, which is good. Um, Sugaba, I mean, I can't get any adjacency because there's no river around here, but it's still worth building. Very much is still worth building. One more source of jade. Yeah, look at this. My gold per turn is boosting now. Marley with gold per turn. It just, it means that I have options. I can do things. That's the best bit. When you can't do anything, that's that's when you feel like the game is getting away from you, when you don't have the options, but I do now have options. 600 gold is expensive, but I'm going to get a great sovereign. I don't know how many classical era sovereigns there are, so we're just going to buy one now. There is another one. Instantly build a temple and temples provide production with Solomon. Okay, that's actually not a good one for me, so I'm glad with who we've gone for here. Getting era score, fixing stuff. We can now buy some gypsum, which I'm going to do just to keep everyone happy. Do I save this project for now? Um, Darius, oh, there's another one. 100 production towards wonders and trade route capacity by one. Hmm, not the best. Depends on how many charges Darius has. One charge. I I'll be honest, that sovereign seems a bit underpowered compared to the others. I, I mean, I guess that's good. It means that the mod isn't overpowered necessarily. It means there's, a there's different options, but 100, 100 production towards a wonder? Yeah, it's like a quarter of an Apadana switching to commercial hubs. I, I think that's going to be the better one for me. Who knows? Who really knows what's going on? I, I'll be honest. I don't. Grants a boost to all medieval era civics. If I'd gone heroic, there would be an option where I could have gone for gold age and gone for the one that gives me 10% extra civic boosts but I don't think it's worth even trying to do that so we're just going to pop you immediately civil service divine right feudalism mercenaries medieval affairs guilds and naval uh, naval tradition as well I, I, I feel like of all of the sovereigns we could have gone for we got a good one there so that's really good oh look Arabia has done a sovereign project 
Oh, okay. That's something to keep an eye on. And writers are being taken as well. Oh, this is going to be a game. Every, all of these are going... They're, they're all being claimed. I need to unlock harbors. Because actually, admirals are one of the few that aren't being claimed at a rapid rate. So that is actually something we sure, probably should do. Brazil. That's the worst person we could have seen on this map. Because Brazil loves great people. And they normally go for a bunch of them. Yeah, they're the ones going for the writers. So we have... And this is a bit of a problem. Norway going for generals we have brazil and scotland going for scientists arabia gunning for sovereigns and brazil going for writers artists and musicians we do need a theater square because obviously it's triple it's triple if we want to do this but that is absolutely something we need to do brazil is leading they've got three great people at the moment two out of 70 god 70 seems like a long way off doesn't it who knows maybe we'll 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 fall back on old faithful you know if we kill everyone then in theory no one will be alive to stop us claiming the great people <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? So we're on to medieval era sovereigns now. If I'm in a golden age, every non-majority religion provides an amenity to my cities. Oh, that's good. Oh, might be a sneakily good sovereign there. Okay, we'll keep an eye on you. We're now getting towards this. I'm just thinking maybe I should use my gold to snag a couple of great people from hotly contested areas, like the scientists, the generals, making sure that we at least grab a couple of them before the AI grabs them all. My first merchant mode. There we go. Two gold to both cities to people trading with this city and an extra trade route which is even better which are my available routes which are the best ones eight gold routes from my capital i like that 85 faith to get a route 175 gold oh it's almost not worth the gold unfortunately i might save up my faith to see if we can do that i do want some writers because the writers will give me gold i can't forget about that as well great works of writing receive four gold and two production that really would boost my commercial hub investment so oh, we're having a lot of a lot of competing factors I like this though. I like it when a game is a little bit like it doesn't quite make sense. You have to think about it. You have to go, what is the optimum strategy? Because it doesn't feel obvious right now. Geneva will give me 15% extra uh, science per turn, which is which is amazing. We really have not had any tribal villages though. This has been such a, a weird low tribal village start for me. I, I don't know what has been going on. Oh, oh, scientist grants a free wildcard policy slot in any government. Yes. Oh my lord, that's huge. You've got to keep checking this every turn. There we go, we get some era score for buying you. But that's wonderful. The scientists are almost run out of, sci uh, of the classical age, but that's no bad thing at all. Okay, perfect. We're going to get a better government from that. Oh, brilliant. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Shoelace, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Clint Hennis, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indignia 68. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!